Howdy folks, welcome back to round two of the AirTech Air Ride install in my 1992 coupe. So before we get after today's video, I just wanted to do a quick little recap of what's going on for anyone that missed the first video. If you did, it's probably best just go back and watch step one. I've tried to lay this install out in three easy to follow steps, okay? First and foremost, air management. That's what the last video was all about. Today's gonna be all about plumbing and wiring the system. Step three will finally be installing the bags, the struts, the shocks, and plugging it all in, pressure testing it, and then ultimately enjoying the air ride. So let's start out with just a quick little recap of what's going on here so the rest of the video makes that much more sense. All right, so here is what I've put together for my dual air compressor setup. This is a piece of quarter inch MDF that I've wrapped in some sort of a felt that I found at the local fabric land. These compressors sit here, okay? Here is kind of the business end of things. So tank, oh, and I mentioned this in my last video, I was gonna put a quick connect down here for one, draining the water out of the system and two, having access to some sort of an external air hose if, I don't know, you ever need air for whatever reason, right? But on the back side of all this, got my solenoid mounted, so we're gonna be wiring this up today. And here is my air manifold, and it's now been plumbed into the tank. This is the water catch, whatever. I won't bore you guys that have already watched the first video, just go back and check out the very first video of, of setting all this up. I explained to you what each one of these ports do. And then the wiring on the top, that comes out the other side of my manifold. And this is ultimately what speaks to my gauges, to which I left you guys a little, whatever, sneak peek, I guess, of these gauges. Um, I was painting them up. These are from Matthew Puzzi at Tech Motion. You can buy those on his Etsy store. They are very slick. You can see here they're even angled towards the driver, like super cool way of having to put gauges in your car and not running an A-pillar or whatever else. So that's where these wires are gonna plug into. So the backside of these gauges, they're all electronic, which is pretty slick. Don't have to run an airline to them. So with all of that being said, folks, we gotta get after wiring this. First things first, we got to run power to the trunk and this is with the supplied four gauge power wire that AirTech includes in their kit. I got my power wire in and chances are if I didn't point it out to you, you probably wouldn't even know it was there. So this is my lead wire coming from my starter solenoid. I also took some time and reroute my amp power leads because those were ran when I was like 17 and a half. So um, I know a little better now. They're re-ran. Um, you can see I got the seat out here. I got tired of doing the old Fox body plank. Anybody that's worked on the driver's side of one of these things up in by the pedals know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like a reverse plank that just kills your back. But here, um, I give you a quick little view, I think of what's going on under here. I decided to run this fusible link in the cab and put it up here by my fuse panel. Um, conventional thinking would obviously put that under the hood, but I'm just, I don't have a lot of room under there and I wanted a nice clean spot to put it. And uh, this is where I chose. So power wire is kind of tucked in and, and starting to be ran alongside my amp wires. It's here right now. I just want to give you a quick update before I went any further. I've pulled the lower back seat out. I'm also going to pull this uh, seat back out of the back seat because I want to be able to access everything up in that corner where my air management's going to be. So I got to run this and I also need to bring an accessory wire back. So guys, just if you're wondering, this is all to do with running this solenoid here, okay? Um, essentially, it's just looks like a real fancy, uh, well, it looks more important than it really is. All it is is a, a switch, okay? 
you run heavy power into one side, heavy power out the other side, and this is your switched side, which works off just a, a low amperage ignition signal. So that's why I got to run this accessory wire. Um, I, for those of you new to Fox Body, and I've had this question asked before, so, and there's no stupid questions really. Accessory being key forward, okay? Power when the key is forward. Okay, so we've ran our power. I've got it all in this split sleeving. Um, I should actually show you guys here. So this Alex Tech split sleeving is really nice stuff to work with. I also use this kind of OEM-esque cloth tape. Um, I'll put a link for you guys in the description below if you're interested in using it. I, uh, I actually got the idea of where to get it from the infamous project. He uses this stuff all the time. So anyway, power and my accessory wire are in and ran through and into the trunk. Right, and this is where my manifold solenoid and uh, ultimately my tank is gonna live. So now we gotta run our ground, okay, to a proper Ground source. Grounds are key, guys. Don't forget your ground and uh, don't half-ass your grounds. That's your most important component in any electrical system. We got to run the ground and then from there we can ultimately start wiring up this solenoid and our compressors. ground and accessory wire are good they're soldered they're ready to go okay we're gonna bolt those onto that solenoid here right quick i just built um these leads so now these are gonna go also from the solenoid over to my compressors okay and then i ultimately have to ground my compressors to which I'm gonna utilize that OEM ground. Hopefully you guys can see that. Anyway, um, my compressors are gonna ground there. Solenoid's getting grounded over here. Um, I'm not too sure if this ground is intended for the solenoid in all honesty. It's the only ground wire that was provided in the kit, but the ground wire, and I'll do a better job of explaining this once we're actually putting wires on the solenoid, but like the only thing that gets grounded is one side of this switch. So, and it's not a high amperage circuit, it's a low amp circuit. So anyway, definitely overkill for the ground, but we got one. So just to give you a quick little idea, this will get grounded. This guy here is gonna come up and go to the pressure switch off the other side of the pressure switch is gonna to go to my accessory wire. And then we're gonna come in here hot with the big four gauge. And then off of here, we're gonna go out to the compressors. Okay, folks, well, it's update time. Hey, listen, now, I'm sorry. I hope this format's working for everybody. I'm a one-man band, right? Cameraman, mechanic, the whole nine yards. So I'm trying my best to give you 
a glimpse as to what's going on with these time lapses. And then I'm trying to stop and explain what's going on and lay everything out for you. So for whatever that's all worth, my apologies if this doesn't work, but I'm trying my best. I've mentioned this already, but we've got our main power that's coming off battery, okay? And then this little guy beside it, that's our accessory wire. We got our ground. Over here, you've kind of seen me in a time-lapse format run two power wires. Those come up and in the channel of my trunk. Let's see if I can show you that here. Okay, so they're running along here and then they're coming out here okay and similarly there's this other chunk of looming that has my two airlines okay that runs alongside in the channel alongside these power wires comes out right here and those are going to plug into my tank but these wires here this is what's going to feed power to my compressors and these are the lines that are going to come off of my compressor. So showing you over here, those two red wires, right? They're going to plug in here. I'm not a huge fan of just push together connectors, but the more I thought about it while I was wiring this up, the more I thought, you know, it would be nice to have a connection point so I can unplug and pull these compressors out without having to cut the wires. Now the ground, I think I've mentioned that already, but these grounds are gonna go up here where this OEM ground goes. There's this uh, green stud here. I'm gonna run a uh, like a grounding washer to get some good bite on it there too, but that's where I'm gonna ground my compressors. And I think that kind of lays out most of the trunk situation, at least to get air and power in here. Next thing we gotta do, we need to run, so this is the switch system, okay, for the, to actually control the air. And I didn't realize this before, but it come, I've come to find out that this is all going to run off its own power and ground. So I think what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to jump off of the main power that I've run back here. This is its own fused line. It's a three amp fuse in here, so very, very low amperage. For my ground, I don't think I'm going to jump off the solenoid, and I'm going to go over there and show you guys how this all works on the solenoid in a sec. I'm going to, in a similar fashion to what I'm doing with my compressors, I'm going to jump off of this OEM ground right here. So I'll run a wire from here in behind, come out and around, and then it'll go to my manifold, which this all plugs into, okay? Um... Another quick little update on the compressors. So this isn't a situation that's gonna to pertain to everyone, but I have added this female to female brass connection so I can run a um, push connect here because ideally you'd have these right off the Vier stud here. You'd have these plumbed right into your tank because I'm running my compressors over here and my tank over there. I need more line. So I've run this female to female and then a, a quick connect and that's what's ultimately going to tie in to these guys. Okay. And come along the channel and over to my tank. Uh, I think that's it for that. Now over here, I didn't film this, but I've ran a quick little jumper wire from my pressure switch down to one side of the switch side on the solenoid, the small stud. So essentially what's going on here is you're running two switches, one here, one here. This one is controlled by pressure. This one is controlled by amperage or voltage power, okay? So what's gonna go on here is my little blue accessory wire is gonna come in and tie in on the top side of this pressure switch. And this pressure switch comes on at 165 PSI and turns off at 200, okay? So it reads what's going on as far as the pressures are concerned in the tank. Then down it goes from here and it ties into this switch, okay? So whenever this circuit is energized or closed, it'll kick power down to here and close this switch, 
which will ultimately run power between these two studs. This side of the solenoid switch is gonna get grounded to body. Up here, my big four gauge wire is gonna tie in, doesn't matter which stud, but it's gonna tie into one of these studs. And then off the other stud is those two red wires I showed you that are gonna come out to my compressors. And that is how that whole switch system works. This is where my other two uh, lines that I showed you that I ran through the channel are gonna tie into. Anyway, I hope I'm not boring you to death with all this. I just, I've mentioned this in my last video. There's not a lot of information online about this. Specific to Fox bodies, and not that this needs to be specific to Fox bodies, this is generic for any car, but I just wanna lay this out for folks as clearly as possible. So hope that helps. Now, the next step is, like I mentioned, we're gonna run this guy, our control switch. I also need to run my wires for my gauges. And now this is where things, you gotta be paying attention when you're doing this because obviously each line refers to which corner you're controlling. So be paying attention, maybe set your beer down while you're doing this one. And then we're ultimately gonna plumb our gauges into my uh, bench bar. Update number 180. <laughs> All right, so I've got my wheel well liner off and the reason why is I figured let's get after some of the hardest things first, which is gonna be running this line, mapping that whole situation out. I was gonna run my gauge wires, but I don't know, that's pretty easy, right? I mean, that's kind of run them, plug them and play them. Uh, I've also, I kind of, it dawned on me that I should be doing something a little bit more difficult when I ran this, because this was so easy. So the, this is where I'm gonna run my controller, okay? I just snuck it in the carpet here, come around and out and back and up and into the trunk. And then I think what I'll do, I'll just reach under the seat, run it, tuck it back under, okay? So whatever, to each their own, you could run this in your glove box, you know, get fancy in your console section, whatever. That's where I'm thinking I want mine out of sight, out of mind. You don't even know it's there. So now I've got to run these airlines and I'm sitting here kind of thinking, well, what should I do? So with the wheel liner out, I'm kind of wondering where I should run this, right? And keeping in mind, I also, I need two lines to come through here, right? One for this side and one for the driver's side. So here's what I've come up with. I don't know if many of you have seen this, but you see that god awful looking hole there? <laughs> Here? Well, you know what that's for? That is for the push pin, that great big sucker that's a pain in the ass to get out that holds your kick panel in. <laughs> that's that hole. And you wonder why they're so hard to get out once they've been pushed in? Well, look at the serrated nature of that backside of that hole. <laughs> That's why it takes like 800 foot pounds to pull one out. So using that as a reference point and this brake line bolt, I'll take you in the cab and I'll show you what I'm thinking here. I've tried my damnedest not to disrupt any of the OE body panels, but I think this is going to be the one. I could, you know, pull my dash down and maybe come through where this harness does, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just looking at this like maybe path of least resistance. I don't know. So anyway, here's the back side of that bolt. Okay. So what I'm thinking here is I'm going to knock a hole right here and uh, run a grommet and I'm going to run my line straight through there. Because something I need to keep in mind is trying to 
stay on somewhat of a straight shot. This stuff does bend, but not like, I don't know. You, you run the risk of caving it in and folding it over on itself, and then you're hooped. So if I come straight through here and then kind of take a sweeper up here on the back side of my wheel well liner, I'll be able to jump through, get over to the other side, come along the firewall, probably just underneath the pinch weld. This one, nice and easy, come up here to my bag. And uh, yeah, so I know there's probably gonna be a lot of judgment on my decisions here, but you know what? I've sat here and thought about it long enough. I think we're drilling a hole. Okay, folks, the painful part's over. The hole is drilled. So here's what we're looking at. Jeez, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here with a camera and a light. Uh, you get the flash, sorry. Okay, so holes in, rubber grommets in, and it's a very, very tight fit, which I'm happy about for two lines to go through. So this is uh, a win. Now I'll give you a quick look at her from the other side so you know what's going on here. And my theory worked. So yeah, came out right by the this brake line bolt. And uh, you know, I mentioned to you that this, this line doesn't really like to bend. Well, I'm just gonna have a sweeper. Jesus. Right, coming up here from, uh, or on the top side of my wheel well liner. Okay, I got both lines ran through to the back. Um, they're all tucked in here. Um, obviously not for good quite yet, but they're in there, okay? Now, I just wanted to stop real quick and show you something here. So I'm still sticking on my original plan of coming through over, like right through here and then under the pinch weld. Well, that sharp edge, was had me worried so i'm like you know do i have a i don't know an old piece of like rubber i could put in there or something and then uh what i ended up doing was taking a piece of this line and uh cutting it this way and opening it up and putting it on the metal there so i've got something i, I guess I've, i'm trying to eliminate that rub point um, I'll also run some um, split loom over this just to be double sure, but uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys that real quick. If you're in the middle of doing this on your fox body or whatever and you want to go the same route that I am here, um, a piece of this line cut in half works real nice to eliminate that rub Put point. The needle on the record. Trimmed out my factory wheel well insulation, got it around my lines, and uh, I've got them ran up roughly to where they need to be. So as you can see here, at least I hope you can, um, I did some split looming on my driver's front left, and uh, that little piece of quarter inch hose on the sharp edge. So I don't think we got anything to worry about there. That should be good. And did the old high school wire tuck with that. So ran it underneath the pinch weld. Unassuming, can't really see anything. And then uh, ran it over to this side. Same thing here. Um, ran some split looming on it because I'm coming through into the shock tower here. I'll show you from the bottom side. So coming through right here, okay? Little split looming just to keep things 
whatever, out of harm's way and lots of line to run to my strut. Um, next step, actually, I'll maybe just show you in the cab here real quick too, because that's all tore apart. Okay. So tucked through the firewall there, through the grommet. And uh, yeah, ran down and through my carpet. And then up and into the back, ready to be tied into the manifold. And I mentioned this earlier, folks, this is where things get a little goofy, right? If you're running four identical lines and not marking stuff out, when you go to plug them in, it could get uh, a little goofy for you. So front two lines are done. Now we got to run the back two. Right, so for the back two lines, I obviously don't want to drill any holes, but I do need to get out of the trunk from my manifold and down to each one of the respective corners to tie into the bag that's going to attach to my lower control arm. So here's my logic and how I'm going to work my way through this. What I'm thinking is of coming through this grommet of which I have one on either side right in front of the shock tower area here, right? Rear shock area. And uh, so keep the grommet in, poke myself a hole, come straight through. And now what I'll do here, I'll just pop this grommet out and I'll run you underneath the car and I'll show you where this all goes to. So we'll uh, shine a light on this. Let's put this bad boy on here. <laughs> Okay, we'll hoist her up and I'll show you what's going on here. Okay, so that grommet feeds right through to the rear frame rail. And uh, nicely enough, I've got myself yet another hole that I can poke right out of without having to drill a hole. Same thing on this side. So I think what we're gonna do is uh, run a line through that grommet to keep the trunk area sealed up. And then uh, again, split looming out of this hole. And then we'll run it over to here where our bag is gonna replace this spring. All right, guys, let's have a quick boo underneath here. So there's where I've come through on my frame rail on both sides. Yeah, I think that'll work out quite nicely, right? The split loom will keep things protected and we can get ourselves over into the bag. Now, obviously considering where you're gonna plug your line into your bag has to be thought through because you don't have a lot of room to get at the top of the bag, which is where your, uh, where your um, connection is at. So, I think what I'm going to do is go on the outside of my axle tube bump stop. So we'll come through out and around that way and plug in. I'll have my bag oriented in such a way that I will be pointing towards the back corner of my car and the plug in connection will be made over there. I think that is out of all of harm's way, right away from the exhaust. It's not going to get pinched on the bump stop here to which more on those bump stops later that and the pinion bump stop i think we're going to be shaving down so we can realize a little bit of a lower stance in a static format so we'll be uh whatever doctoring those up with a bit of a hot knife anyway now we got to get after running the wires for our gauges all right guys, I'm just gonna wire up these gauges so you get a plug for each one. And uh, pretty simple, orange is dimmer, white is 
key on accessory wire. Red's hot, constant 12 volt, black is ground. So I'm just gonna tie these guys together and then I'm gonna build a bit of a jumper to go from my power source, my accessory source, and my ground source over near the fuse panel and uh, fish those wires through the dash. up but not tested so here's what I've done uh, followed the similar path to my front airlines okay so this is just spare gauge wire um, these gauges come with plugs on the back of them so you can't really well you could shorten them if you wanted to but I thought I'd leave some extra here it'll allow me to pull all my manifold and everything out if and when I need to get at it so everything's tucked along in here. Come up here through the kick panel. Got myself a little plastic uh, eyelet. Not eyelet. I don't know. Whatever the hell those are called. And then I've ran up and along and down the bottom side of the dash frame um, along the back side here and up into my vent pods, which I'm really excited about to be honest with you i'm not a big fan of gauges in weird places i don't know i guess some could argue that maybe that's a weird place but I haven't drilled any holes and i still have my original hvac vents right so that's i guess we should maybe test these hey let's plug in the battery or hook up the battery i should say and we'll give them a run Okay. That's my keys. All right, here we go. Cool. So now, geez, pardon the beat. I don't know. Well, I do know on the center digital portion, the left, or pardon me, the lower number is your, what the hell have I done here? The left, <laughs> the lower is my left side, okay? And what I've done here is front, rear. Now, what I don't know is if that also corresponds to this and this, right? Like, which they're digital as well, but essentially you get two, two gauges in one. Um, there's that center, like number, that'll give you the, the number of PSI you got in your bags. And then there's the outer two that do their thing. I'll have to figure that out once we get it all hooked up, but. Worst case, I can always just pull the vent pod out and switch the wires around, or the plugs. Now, the back. Uh, we're sort of hooked up back here. Compressors are hooked up. Um, they're not powered. They're gonna be powered over here once I start plugging the solenoid in. Now, I've given everyone instructions on how to hook all this up. The reason that I haven't like, hooked it up, pushed it all in and whatever, is I wanna get 
the bags in, the rear, and the struts in the front, and hook those up, and then do like a dry run while this is all pulled out. Because I mean, there's nothing worse than tucking everything away, putting it how you want it, and then having to pull it all out again and, and deal with it, right? So that's why this is out right now. But I think this is where I'm going to leave this one is unhooked. I'm going to leave all this unhooked before putting the bags and the struts in. Okay, folks, I got a feeling this is going to be a big video. So if it is, my apologies. I obviously haven't edited it yet. I'm just working my way through the work side of it. So my apologies if it is, but I hope for whatever that's all worth, um, this is valuable information to someone that's trying to plumb their car. It gives you an idea of where you can run things, how you can run it, so on and so forth. So that's gonna be the end of video number two. Video number three is gonna be hardware, okay? We're putting bags in the back, we're putting struts in the front. We've already ran the lines, so really we just gotta plug them in. Maybe trim the lines up a bit, but plug them in. And then we'll liven this thing up and watch it go up and down. So I'm gonna leave it here. Thanks so much for tagging along, folks. I really appreciate you. I hope this video helps. If it did, please share it along. That's why I do these videos. I love helping out the community. So thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye for now.